Hi, hello, it's Nikki and welcome to my messy bookshelves. Today I wanted to talk about my very extensive pile of possibilities for October. So, I always planned on participating in Victober, of course, but I am also feeling a little bit spooky, so I don't want to only participate in Victober. I would like to read some spooky things that I have been wanting to read for a while. So this is kind of a mashup video where I will talk about my Victober picks as well as some regular picks. So starting off, I will talk about the three just generic picks that I have had on my shelf and wanted to read for a little bit. And these, all, all three of them are spooky reads for the spooky season, and I am in that mood right now, so this is not a stretch. <laughs> the first one is The Legend of Sleepy Hollow by Washington Irving, and this one is very short, and I have been wanting to read this, I don't know why I haven't, but I've been wanting to read it for decades, like actual decades. I grew up... Um, just a few miles away from the town, I think it Tarrytown, or um, I think it is called Sleepy Hollow now, but I remember passing through here on my way to New York City when I lived in New York as a child. So, um, a spooky one that we all kind of know what goes on, but maybe not entirely. So, I think that I will definitely read this one. It is very short, so it shouldn't take too much time, but that is the first one of my generic spooky reads for October. The next one is one that I've been wanting to read for years as well. And this is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. And I tried reading this many years ago and it wasn't that I didn't like it. I just got distracted and never finished it. So I never got more than a third of the way through. And yes, it is a spooky atmospheric vibe. So I am looking forward to this. This is a story of a gentleman who is very good looking and makes a pact of some sort where he does not age. He puts all of his age and all of his negative qualities into a painting that he has hidden in his house. And we can see all of these things compounded into this painting as the story goes on. And not too sure where it ends, but I have been looking forward to reading this for a long time. So that is why it is on my list for October. I would like to finally get through this book. And the next one is one that I wanted to read um, in September, but did not get the time to do so. And this is We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. And it sounds, by all accounts, to be a very spooky read, and I really enjoyed The Haunting of Hill House, so sounds like this will be a perfect read for October as well. There are some others that I do not have on my shelves that I would like to read as well, but we will try to stick with what I have on my shelves right now. And then, speaking of Victober, so this is something that I have followed along with a little bit for years. But this is my first year on booktube following along with victober so um this is a reading challenge or a reading event that is hosted by um several booktubers and that is kate at katie or at kate howe uh katie at books and things marissa at blatantly bookish and ross at scally dandling about the books all excellent booktubers and some of them I have been subscribed to for actual years. <laughs> um, but each of them has posed a challenge for this Victober. I don't know that I will get through all of these challenges, but I did want to try and select something for each of them. Now, I know for a fact that I will not get through everything this month. I have quite a few chunky books here and I don't want it to be thought that I'm saying I am going to get through all of these things because I know I won't. Um, but the first challenge was Kate's challenge and it is a Victorian book where religion is a component of the story. So I feel like arguably any Victorian novel has an element of religion in it because we're talking about the Victorians and they were very focused 
on their religion. But the book that I have chosen is one that is featured in this giant book, this giant collection of Sherlock, Sherlock Holmes stories. And I have chosen to read the uh, A Study in Scarlet. And that focuses on the murder of two Mormons. So I thought I would kind of, you know, go off the rails a little bit. Um, but that is what I chose for Kate's challenge. Now for Katie's challenge, she um, challenged us to read a Victorian book that plays with form in some way. So I couldn't really think of like off the top of my head, I couldn't think of a book that played with form the way that this one does. And this one is one that I have read before, and that is Dracula, an old favorite of mine, and I will have no problem rereading it for the month of October. What better time to read Dracula than in October? And this is one that I have no problem rereading again and again. So um, the form is letters, newspaper clippings, articles. So I have always found it interesting the way this book is laid out. And I love the book. So I I think that I will get through it because I know that I love this book. So I don't foresee a difficulty in getting through this. Now we are reaching some challenging uh, areas in this challenge. Uh, so for Ross's challenge, we have a Victorian drama, so a Victorian play. I could not think of any, and I certainly don't have any on my shelves. I may look up um, an audio version of a Victorian play, but for right now, I do not have a selection for this prompt. This might be one that I do not complete. Uh, and the next one was Marissa's challenge, and this was a Victorian work that has been serialized. So for this one, I chose two different works, and I know that I will not get through both of these because both of them are very chunky. And the first one was The Pickwick Papers, which I have another copy of, but this is the most recent one that I just picked up yesterday. And yes, this is a work by Charles Dickens. And I am leaning a little bit towards this one just because I hear that it is supposed to be quite funny and satirical. I don't really know anything about it, and I am wanting to dip my toes into Charles Dickens more. I don't know why I am so intimidated by Dickens, but here we are. So I will attempt, I will start it, and I will attempt to get through it. But if not, my other selection for the serialized uh, prompt is Wives and Daughters. And I have loved everything that I have read by Elizabeth Gaskell. This one has been on my shelf for quite some time because I have heard that it is unfinished and I have trauma <laughs> from unfinished works. I like a nice clean ending and I like to have closure at the end of a story. So that is the only reason that I have uh, not picked this up yet. But I know that I love anything by Elizabeth Gaskell. I also have a collection of Elizabeth Gaskell ghost stories uh, on my Kindle, which I may pick up during the month as well, but I know that this one was serialized and I will probably pick this one up as well. So between these two, I don't know which one I will actually complete, but we will see at the end of the month. So <laughs> wish me luck. And then the last prompt was or the last prompt that I will participate in. I know there's a group read, but I know I won't be able to finish that. Um, but the group challenge is to read a work by Sir, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, which my first one was a work by him. But, you know, I like to punish myself and I have selected a work by Wilkie Collins as well. And this is in honor of two booktubers who lost their lives this year and, um, I think that this is a wonderful prompt to honor both of them. And the book that I have selected was The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins. I have read The Woman in White. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was not my favorite, but I did enjoy it. Um, I am looking forward to 
dipping my toes into this one and I keep saying that but I know that I have picked a lot of big books for this month and I know that I won't finish all of them but I would at least like to give it my best shot and give it a go and this one I know deals with um, the theft of a famous diamond or something a beautiful girl and the young man who is in love with her so we have typical Victorian romance and you know mystery and you know that sort of thing so these are the books that I so far have on my TBR for this month I know that I will not finish everything and I know that there's probably one or two things that I might pick up like the Victorian ghost stories and I have Ray Bradbury's Something Wicked This May Come on order as well so those are two things I may pick up as well for the spookiest of the spooky season months. And yeah, that is it for today. And I thank you so much if you've made it to the end of this video. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.